Hey, it's Trip here from the 87th. This video is about point-to-point -point navigation in BMS 4.33. The information is current as of update 2. So point-to-point -point navigation is a method of taking us from our present position to any other position based on our current uh, or active uh, navigation source. So in this case, we are in the nav mode on the instrument mode selector, and we have uh, steer point one selected, and we're 27 miles from that uh, position. We want to go from this position to some other position in a relatively straight line. In other words, the quickest way to get from this position to some other position, and we're going to use point to point navigation to do that. This method can also be used uh, with reference to bullseye. If we set uh, 25 as our current steer point in Falcon 25 is always the bullseye position and so uh, if this was on 25 we would be 29 miles from uh, bullseye and if we looked on the HSI the tail of the bearing pointer we could see exactly what our uh, radio that we're on would be and those two numbers uh, would the, in this case we would say 141 at 115 if we had uh, 25 set here just do that real quick and just verify it there we go so we're at 116 miles, and uh, if we looked at the HSI, the bearing pointer tail would be on 141, because that is the bullseye position. So let's uh, get out of that, go back to 1. So that's another use for this uh, technique. I can make this happen here. There we go. All righty. That's another use for the point-to-point uh, -point navigation technique, is it'll take you from your present position to any called-out bullseye position. But it isn't very practical in the heat of battle. You know, you don't want to have to be switching from your target steer point to steer point 25 to do a point-to-point -point navigation problem, uh, find a solution uh, or a heading to turn to to take it to that uh, called bullseye position. There are other, better, easier ways to determine that. But uh, it does apply if you did want to do that. And the other use for point-to-point -point navigation is that it can help you with uh, instrument approaches. If you're coming back from the war and the weather has gone down at your landing air base and you have to make an ILS approach, uh, a lot of the ILS approaches start at initial approach fixes that are associated with DME arcs. And if you don't know how to fly a DME arc, or you just don't want to, then it would be cool if you could just go directly to the point where that arc intercepts the final approach course. So let's say your the approach plate shows a 15 DME arc, and then when you intercept the final approach course, you'll be on the, the extended center line of the uh, runway at a point uh, 15 miles from the field. That's where the arc intercepts the final. So let's just go directly to that point. So let's say it's the uh, 180 degree radial at 15 DME. So we want to go from our present position directly to that point and then we can start our ILS approach from there. Uh, so this point-to-point -point navigation is going to help us do that. Now we could, if we looked at the approach plate, we could look and see if there was a latitude and longitude associated with that intersection of the DME arc and the final approach course and many times there is, but then again many times there's not. So we need to have a tool in our tool bag that will take us from our present position to that new initial approach fix that we want to use, uh, that 15 miles out on final. And so this is how we're going to do it. All right, let's go down to the HSI where all this takes place. And let's see if I can get a nice uh, picture of that. Oop, there we go. All righty, so the HSI, horizontal situation indicator, Right now we have the uh, nav source uh, selected, uh, the instrument mode selector on nav. So we're uh, operating off uh, the uh, selected uh, steer point. Let's say it's our target steer point. I think I had it on one, but we'll just, let's just say it's on steer point 10, and that's our target steer point. So we're down here looking at the HSI. So our position from that target uh, steer point is we are on the tail of the bearing pointer. We're always on the tail of the bearing pointer, and that's this little uh, indication here. It's the opposite end of the head of the bearing pointer. 
So we're on, uh, I'm going to call it the 190 just for uh, ease of use. We're on the 190 degree uh, radio at 35 miles from steer point 10. And let's say that the, uh, the FAC, uh, he wants us to attack this target, which is right here in the center. He wants us to attack that target on a westerly heading. So in other words, we have to figure out how to get from our present position, which is right here, to a point that's east of the target so that when we turn around and come back in to attack the target, we're on a westerly heading. So he just said some uh, from a point uh, out the east on a westerly heading. So let's just pick east as the uh, position we're going to go to. So if we're 35 miles at this position, let's say, and I know it's a little far out, but just for argument's sake here, let's say that uh, we want to go to that point that's 35 miles east of the uh, target uh, that we're attacking. So what we want to do is we want to, if this is the 090 degree radial, and this is the radial that we're on, we're on this radial 35 miles from the fix, we want to go to uh, a radial that's the 090 degree radial 35 miles from the fix. So what we would do is we would draw an imaginary straight line between where we are and where we want to go. So we're going from here in this direction to the left uh, to this uh, position that we want to go to. So we take that imaginary straight line and keep it you know, in mind here as we move it down so that it passes right through the center of the HSI. So now it's kind of oriented like this. We keep it parallel to this line, but we move it through the center of the HSI. Now you can see that this is, this is a very imprecise science here that we're working with. You know, if we got it off a little bit, then our heading would be a little bit off. But this is the initial heading that we're going to turn to to get us moving in the right direction toward this uh, 090 at 35 uh, mile fix. So here's the line again right there and we move it down to the center and we want to go in this direction. So I'm going to turn to a heading of about 045. I mean just, just as an initial wag, okay, uh, my line going through the center points to uh, 045. Alright, so let's take it off freeze. now. We said we want to go to 090 at uh, 35, and we're going to turn to a heading of uh, 045 degrees. Okay, so let's take it off of freeze and go ahead and turn it. Now, if I'm uh, if I'm in the clear and, and VMC conditions, I would honk it right around and get right over to uh, 045 heading as quick as I can here. But uh, if I did that on the sim, it would uh, autopilot would kick off, and I'd be in a lot of trouble. So what I can do is I can uh, speed it up here with the time lapse. So I'm turning to a heading of 045. All righty, roll out right about there. Okay, that's just my initial guess. Now notice I haven't done anything with the course indicator. It's not uh, really necessary to, to use that for this uh, exercise. All right, I'm going to pause the sim right here, and let's take another look here at how we uh, how we're doing. We want to go from our present position, there's the tail of the bearing pointer right there at 35 miles, and it doesn't have to be exact, we just round the numbers up. There's 35 miles, and we want to go to that 0, 0, uh, 0, 090 degree uh, radial at 35 miles. Well, here's 090, so if this distance from here to the outer edge of the compass card is 35 miles, then 090 at 35 would be right there. There's 35 miles. So if I draw another line now between where I am and where I want to go, up this direction, if I keep that line parallel, or not parallel, just keep that line in this orientation and bring it through the center, then this uh, line now that goes through the center of the uh, compass car is pointing to 045. So it looks like we're pretty spot on here. It looks like... Uh, this line is when we bring it through the center, it points to 045, which was our initial guess. So let's uh, take the sim off pause here and let it run. And what we're looking for now is the head of this bearing pointer is going to continue to fall. Well, if the head of the bearing pointer falls, the tail is going to rise. And eventually, the tail is going to rise up to a point where it gets to 090. And if uh, 
everything is right, then when the tail gets to 090, the DME will be at 45. So let's uh, take it off pause, and I'm going to put it on accelerated mode here. I'm going to try to keep my heading where it is. Now we're going to a point that's uh, 35 miles. All right. Let me speed it up some more. DME is decreasing. Now the, DME, the head of the bearing pointer goes below the wingtip. Now the DME is going to start increasing. Let me get my heading back here. Alrighty. Something in there. Speed it up again. Speed it up. We're looking for 0, 090 0 at 35. Looks like it's going to work out pretty close. Alright, there's 090. Pause the sim. Alright, there's about the 090. We missed it by a mile, but that's okay because it gets us to a point where now we're oriented. We know where we are, and uh, from this point on, uh, we know that all we have to do now is just reverse course and attack on a westerly heading. We can either you know, go out this way and come back and make a right turn and come back in and attack, or just go ahead and you know, turn left and intercept the. Uh, you know, this 270 degree course inbound and attack the target that way. But point to point navigation got us to that point that we wanted to go to. And we can use the same technique with instrument approaches. The uh, instrument approach uh, that we want to uh, fly is an ILS approach and it starts on a DME arc and we don't know how to do DME arcs so we just want to go directly to the point where the arc intercepts the final approach course. Let's say that's, uh, uh, let's say the runway heading is 180, so we want to be on the 360 uh, degree uh, radial at 15 miles. So uh, we look at our present position. We're uh, 090 at 34 miles, and we want to go to a position that's uh, 360 at 15 miles. So if this is about 30 miles, then 15, if this is the station, then 15 would be halfway out this uh, 360 degree radial. So it would be right about here. So we want to go from this position to this position. And so we take that imaginary line and we run it through the center of the HSI. So now it's looking like this. And if we extend this out here, we can see that we need to turn to a heading of about 290 or so, 285, 290, something like that. So if this was an instrument uh, approach that we were doing that starts at that uh, 300 degree or 360 degree radio for 15 miles, this is the heading that we need to turn to to take us to that point. What we do after we get to that point is the subject of you know, a different video. That's uh, how to fly the ILS and how to do a course reversal and you know, get yourself oriented so that you can turn back inbound and fly the ILS approach. Uh, that's in the ILS video that I did. Uh, but this uh, just uh, concerns uh, getting us to this point. This is called point-to-point -point navigation. All right, now, one other thing I want to mention is, uh, what, is what happens if, uh, well, if we have, if we're going to go from the 090 to, I'm just making up a new example here, we want to go from the 090 to the uh, 360 degree radial. So we want to go from three, uh, 090 at 34 miles, which is, happens to be exactly where we are, to a point that's uh, 360 at 34 miles. So the distance from the uh, center of the HSI where the station is located to the outer edge of the compass card, anywhere along the outer edge of the compass card, that is 34 miles. This distance to the outer edge of the compass card is always the larger of the two distances that are associated with the two fixes. So uh, in this case, they're both the same. The distances are both the same along these radios that we've chosen. Let's say that uh, we want to go from, um, let's say our position is uh, the zero, well it is, it's the 090 for 34, but we want to go to the, um, the 360 at 60 miles for some reason, okay? So what, now what are we going to do? All right, now the greater of those two distances is 60 miles. We want to go to 360 at 60, and we're 090 at 34. 
So anywhere along the outer edge now is 60 miles at this point in time. So uh, if I want to go to a point that's uh, 360 at 60, that's right there, then I am at 34 miles, so I must be about halfway uh, along this distance, uh, along this uh, radial. If this is a station at 0 DME and this is 60 DME, then I must be right about here. So I want to go from a position here to a position there, so I draw my straight line and then bring it through the center of the HSI, and it looks like it's going to be about 345 or so, something like that. So I would turn left to 345 and then just wait uh, and see, uh, take another check, you know, as I fly along. Now, uh, yeah, just take another check or two on uh, my uh, heading, see if it's uh, still accurate. I may have to adjust it, you know, a few degrees. It's not an exact science. Uh, so uh, if you get to where you're going and you're a few degrees off uh, in bearing or uh, maybe a mile or two off in uh, distance, that's okay. It, it gets you in the ballpark, and that's all it is. It's a very non-precision uh, type uh, uh, technique. But it is useful, uh, in this case, uh, flying instrument approaches to get you to a point where you can start an ILS. Uh, if you're familiar with you know, flying the localizer and the glide slope, it'll get you to that point where you can uh, feel comfortable flying the approach inbound. All right, I hope this helps, and trip out.